joining us for another case on Killer Speak. Please subscribe if you haven't yet and also hit the like button, the thumbs up, so we can have these videos thrown up into the algorithms of YouTube land and other social media platforms. Today I bring you a case a very sad and tragic case of a young lady named Catherine Pham. And she lived up in Ridgecrest, Ridgecrest, California. I was actually going up to Ridgecrest a couple weeks ago for work. And of course, I wanted to see what type of crime was going on up there, just to know what area I was going to, even though crime has no address. So I Googled it and this case popped up right away and it was just really sad to learn about. And I really feel for her, the loss of her young life at 21 and also for her family and her friends. So Catherine Pham, she was a beautiful young lady with her whole life in front of her. She was 21 years old. She lived in Ridgecrest and she was having a casual relationship is what I read with a young man named Daniel Gunnarsson and he was 20 or is 20 he's 20 years old they actually attended the same high school and it was quite open that they had an, a casual relationship and how long did they were dating or seeing each other I I don't know the relationship was coming to an end from what I read it said that Catherine was not reciprocating you know what Daniel was expressing and feeling to her about a couple days before you know things weren't going so well and there were a couple other instances where things, you know, they had some ups and downs and maybe some arguments from what her friends have said and what her friends have told investigators and also what his friends have told. May 18th, which is also the day that she was murdered. And approximately 11 a.m., her body was discovered in an RV storage garage and the person who owned that RV storage garage is actually Daniel Gunnarsson's stepdad. Daniel's stepfather finds him in his garage along with Catherine Pham's murdered body. Daniel has blood literally on his hands, on his neck, and his pants were saturated in her blood. He is arrested and he's charged with murder. And during his questioning, he was, and he admitted to this, that he was acting with, you know, some odd behavior. He was acting out of it. He said he was doing that on purpose. He also admitted to being high on marijuana as well as wax. If you don't know what wax is, um, it looks like earwax, a big glob of earwax, and it's highly saturated in THC, and it's, it's a very high and potent form of marijuana. I think some people may call it hash or hash oil. So he said he was high, and he was also acting odd, like he was out of it. And um, the police asked him, he did say he killed Catherine. And they also asked him, what happened to her head? You know, how did her head get bashed in? And he said, I don't know. I think I did it with an ice pick. I think I bashed it in with an ice pick something like that and so he had admitted all this however his court-appointed attorney entered a plea 
of not guilty. At this point, I cannot find that he has um, gone in for his preliminary hearing. I'm still waiting to see when he goes because it has been delayed. And the reason it has been delayed is Mr. Gunnarsson refuses to leave his cell and actually go into court. And I'm just trying to comprehend that when you're arrested and you're charged and you're in custody and you're supposed to go into court, like you refuse to leave your cell. I don't know, does he like hold himself and stay, pin himself in there where he can't, they can't bring him in? I mean, I guess you have a right not to leave your cell even though you're being charged with something. It's the first I've ever heard of this, so I, I need to do some more research on that. The fact is, Catherine Pham, she no longer exists on this planet. She was 21. She was a huge animal lover. She volunteered with the uh, local animal shelter. They're actually taking donations in, in lieu of, you know, of the gifts when they had her funeral, they wanted people to donate to what her passion was, what her love was, and animals were a big part of it. And you know, just keep her in your thoughts, keep your, her family in your thoughts, and let's just hope that justice prevails for this terrible loss of life and, you know, murder of this young woman who had her whole life ahead of her. Uh, Daniel told some of his friends and also his stepdad that he was having a really hard time with the breakup, feeling suicidal. Yes. The day before he was seen driving around erratically as well as backing his car up into like a, a building or a wall, it said. You know, there were times that her friends mentioned with the police uh, that they had some issues where her friends had to go pick her up in Vegas because he was driving crazy then, and I guess she wasn't paying attention to him while he was driving, and she was on the phone talking. So he started driving at a high rate of speed. So there was just some of those stories, obviously. I didn't interview any of these people. Everything I pulled from all my data came off the internet. And once again, he's been charged with her murder and also, you know, he has only been charged. He has not been proven guilty. He has yet to leave his cell to actually go into court. So we will be following this, keeping up on this, which is here on the West Coast in California in Ridgecraft. Just say a little prayer for Catherine Pham and her family. Thank you so much. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the like button if you haven't done that either so we can get into the algorithm email. via email, killerspeak at gmail.com. I would love to, you know, bring your story out, whether it's about your family, a friend, you know, someone that you know. Just give me as much information as you can. Other than that, thank you guys so much and have a great evening.